Hey everyone, Ryan from eBike Escape. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the Hemiway Zebra. We're gonna go in depth and talk about range and talk about some of the features from a commuter's perspective. So let's get into it. Before we get into all of the details on this electric bike, if you are looking to purchase any electric bike from Hemiway, please check out the link in the description. If you use that link before you make your purchase, it makes videos like this one possible. So thanks for your support. We'll also throw our resources down in the description as well. Our electric bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page if you're looking for a deal on an electric bike. With that, let's dig in. I'm here with Jamie again. Hi. Previously, we did a video talking about the Electric X Premium and we decided to go with the Zebra next because that has actually been one of our most popular, more recent videos. So we thought we would go a little bit more in depth. Jamie did some commuting on it and uh, we'll talk about range in a little bit. If you wanna jump just to that section, we'll put a timestamp in. But let's talk about the bike maybe first, the, the Zebra name. I love it. I think that's a great name. It's easy to remember. It's got the fun icon on it. Uh, I think it's just a nice looking bike. Is the only color option white and black? Yep. In the step through, yep. fitting. the only option is white. And if you saw our full review, which I'll put in the top right hand corner of the screen, I kind of did a safari theme for the intro, which is kind of fun. And as Jamie was pointing out, there's some zebra graphics here on the top tube. And overall, a really clean looking electric bike. I think the design is really good. Super burly built frame, very heavy at 88 pounds, but that motor has no problem getting the bike up to speed for sure. Not at all. This <laughs> got a lot of power. <laughs> it was not a problem. I think the, the first thing that I personally think is worth covering is, so fat tire bikes in general, a lot of people Maybe people coming from a more traditional commuting bike background, non-electric bikes, they look at a fat tire bike and they wonder why would anyone purchase a fat tire e-bike, especially if you're riding on pavement, right? Because the fat tires are certainly good for off-roading, traction, and they do increase rolling resistance. And I think some people might wonder about this video, why would you choose the Zebra for commuting? But I think the thing about it is with fat tire e-bikes are just so popular. People love the look at look of them. It feels like almost a little bit of a mini motorcycle. They're very big bikes. And so when well, why not take advantage of that? Right. Yeah. I mean, I like biking overall. I like biking with non e-bikes, too. But one of the reasons I'm commuting with an e-bike is so that I can have that flexibility. You know, I can tackle hills. I can go off road with it if I want. I know it's not traditional, but e-bikes in general aren't traditional, right? Yeah. I'm kind of way, I mean, I think someone asked me recently about like the fat tire bikes and if I thought maybe they were going down in popularity, but I don't see that trend at all. We review so many fat tire electric bikes, even at the, this bike is priced at $2,000. There's so many to choose from, which makes it, I guess, nice from a consumer standpoint. So, so correct me if I'm wrong, but the only reason that road bikes don't want fat tires is rolling resistance, right? Rolling I mean, resistance, that's the big speed, thing. yeah, light uh, bikes. But when you have a motor and you can throw a giant battery on it, weight really doesn't matter. The other thing, so we, we chose to review the step through, obviously. And one of the nice things is it just makes this bike a little bit more accessible. You can see the, the step over height is a lot lower here. Um, that's nice if you don't have to worry about wearing the right clothes. Yeah. Like I got to wear my work clothes when I go to work. I don't want to have to worry about not being able to get my leg up and over a traditional bike. So I think that's a big plus for comfort. Yeah. And we talked a little bit kind of about your perspective. So just to give some background, Jamie has access to all these e-bikes. So why not <laughs> commute you. on an e-bike? <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, your philosophy is more, I want to arrive at work, not sweaty. I, I need want to arrive good to go, ready to work. And that's mm -hmm. why Kind of the bikes fit. Yeah, so I like to wear my work clothes. I, I originally, when I started, I wore more athletic clothes, but now I just put my work ones on right away. It's great. Yep. Um, you know, we covered this a little bit in my last range test, but I mean, I think e bikes have made uh, all the difference for me being able to commute to work because I have some really big hills on the way to work. I would not be able to bike without being covered in sweat. Yeah, and um, it also lets me go. I don't go the fastest or I, I don't go the shortest way to work because there's a big busy highway and I don't like biking when there's that many people, especially in the morning when everybody's going to work. 
So having the e-bike, I can go the slightly longer way and still get there in a really reasonable amount of time. Now this is my second range video. I'm trying to get a, a, a general uh, similar speed so we can compare things. So I try to go about 12 to 14 miles per hour average. Uh, and this one I ended up closer to the 13 to 15 because it was just pretty fast. And I was only in pedal assist too. That was the highest I went until the very end when the battery started uh, dying on me because pedal assist too was getting me up these hills, still going 11, 12 miles an hour, which I think is fast enough for an average commute. If I was in a hurry, you could bump it up. I think if I was commuting with this bike regularly, I would adjust the pedal assist. Yeah. And I, I just want to call out just a little bit. The, so Jamie had mentioned customizability. And so uh, for instance, for her preference, if she wanted to, she could go into the advanced settings and change actually how much percentage of the, the motor that you're getting in each pedal assist level. So maybe in pedal assist one, instead of, I don't, I don't know exactly what it's set up, but maybe it's all already at 30%. Maybe you only want 10. Yeah, I think it's 32 or 36%. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. So you could, if you, know, you don't necessarily want all that power, but you can maybe make you know, one through three 10% increments and then maybe four is like 70% and then five is 100% when you really want the extra power. Um, and I think it, it's worth pointing out just your, um, maybe talk about like how much effort you're putting in as well as your cycling background. Yeah. So I like to pedal. I don't like to feel like I'm riding a motorcycle. So I really almost never use the throttle. Um, and I'm usually... I don't want to ghost pedal. So I want to be able to put a little bit of effort in, get a little bit of exercise. Um, I do quite a bit of mountain biking. I don't do a lot of road biking right now, but I, I think I'm in decent shape. I mean, you just did a six hour race. So I think I did, but we didn't place <laughs> very high. <laughs> I did make it through, yes. but you're not a, you're not <laughs> yeah. someone who's completely new to no, cycling. No. Um, you know, and, and like yourself, I mean, we always like to, put a lot of these electric bikes in their highest gear. And then we're usually, our goal is usually to get to whatever our destination is as fast as possible while still pedaling. I mean, it's still a, yes, it's an electric bike and yes, you can use the throttle if you want to. Um, but we usually don't unless we're maybe at a stoplight and want to beat a bunch of cars or something like that. I mean, this bike is well designed to pedal. Yes. And some of the other yeah. e-bikes uh, have different looks and they're not fit to pedal. I mean, yeah. I know they have pedals, but they don't, this one you can pedal just fine. Now that said, when the battery does die at the end, when you don't have any, it's a heavy bike and it yeah. is hard to get going. Yeah. I, um, I, I did have to call my husband to come pick me up when the battery died because it was, <laughs> despite biking history, there was no way I was getting this home without We'll put it. a picture on the screen <laughs> because it's really funny. I mean, this is a legit range test. We're getting there. Oh, um, the power indicator. Yes. I think that is a cool feature. I've ridden quite a few of e-bike escapes um, bikes. I have not had one yet with a power indicator. I thought that was pretty cool. So it's, it doesn't have the exact percentage, but there are these bars that go up and it's a very clear visual that you're using more of the battery power, or the power of the motor. Um, and it's just kind of a neat comparison to see how much you're pedaling and versus how much the bike is uh, helping you. Yeah, and, and I don't know exactly what those power bars equate to as far as wattage. Some bikes will actually tell you the wattage, which is obviously more more helpful. This this bike kind of just shows you, you know, whether you're using a little bit of power, kind of a medium amount of power, or you're, you know, the motor's maxing out. What about some of the other features? Uh, this bike comes with lights. Oh, that is, I love that. <laughs> I think that's really nice. Uh, again, when I get up, I just want to get to work. I don't want to have to try to get the separate light. You know, um, we're lucky to have a few different options as far as what bike I ride. I don't want to try to switch lights between bikes and it, it just, it's so much easier when they're right on the bike. I like the idea that it has room for a basket. Can you buy a basket specific for that one? Um, I'm not sure if they sell a specific basket, but you have the pannier hangers and it's a huge rack. I mean, you could put quite a bit of cargo. I'm not sure of the actual weight capacity back here, but uh, it is nice. I mean, it's a very well-built rack for sure. Let's talk a little bit about fit on, on this bike. I'm particularly interested in kind of what you thought about the handlebar setup. The Zebra does not come with an adjustable stem. I think that's an accessory some people can consider if they want the handlebars a little bit more closer to them so they can ride in a more upright riding position. So, and how did you feel about like overall geometry fit? Yeah, so I'm about 5'6", and I thought it fit pretty well. 
Um, I, I did think a couple times on my ride that it would be nice to be able to adjust the stem. I was checking it out to see if it was one of that had an adjustable stem. But even without it, I, I mean, I thought it was pretty comfortable. Um, the other commuting thing I think we failed to mention are the fenders. And here we are in Wisconsin City and in the rain. I mean, we're getting drizzled on here. So for a commuting bike, I mean, if you want a fat tire bike, it, most of them do come with, with fenders. And you did say you ride it yeah, road in rain? Yeah, I, I try to avoid it, but it was an accident. I did end up riding home in the rain one day and it was fine. I, the bike did great. I think the fat tires probably help on that too, giving more traction. And I didn't notice anything irritating about the fenders. I didn't have the big mud streak up the back. And I, I mean, I thought the fenders did really well. And uh, I mean, some people ask about, you know, how waterproof are these bikes? You know, if a company gives you a specific certification that they're meeting, that's always great. But anecdotally for us, I mean, I we've driven back from Florida in the middle of the night and it started downpouring and I wasn't going to go and put our kind of uh, topper or, or uh, basically a giant weatherproof bag over the bikes at like midnight uh, and our bikes were totally fine. I mean, we do, when we get to our destination, we dry them off after. And, you know, with the battery being encased in the, the down tube there, you have some additional protection. But generally, I mean, as long as you're not riding in a downpour situation where there's standing water on the streets and it's And who wants getting... to do that? Yeah, exactly. That sounds awful. Let's <laughs> yes. go ride through a flood. Yes, down exactly. And one of the features that we were just talking about before we started filming is that you could have charged your phone. Uh, there's a USB port underneath cool. the display, which <laughs> is nice for a commuter. I mean, if you want to yeah. charge your phone up on the way there and on the way home, or you live in a big city and want, want to use maps, Google Maps or something like that for the cycling uh, routes, that's, that's something um, that's really nice. Okay, now I think we should get into talk about range. Yep. So 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery, which is kind of unheard of at this price range. I'm not going to say there's not other electric bikes that don't offer that, but that is a very high capacity. When I kind of dug into the review, it's like, if you're considering this bike, you likely highly value that giant battery in the down tube. And a lot of these companies are a little bit ambitious with their, their ratings. And Hemiway puts out a 60 to 80 mile, which I mean, that's a lot of miles. There's the, the average car commute or just like driving around town is what, like under 10 or something. Like most people only drive 10 miles just on average with some of these e-bikes have such big range. It's like, you're unlikely, unless you're going on some huge adventure. I mean, you didn't charge your, this bike up for what? Like how many days was that? It was five days. So five days, just pulling it out of the garage, just starting, no worrying about charging. Um, and it's not to say you, I mean, it's, it's probably better for the battery to to char in fact, it is better to charge it up. These batteries are most happy between like 50 and 80%. So if you really want to optimize, I guess you could charge it to, you know, 80% or something like that. So don't necessarily just run your battery out and be like, oh no, I ran out of battery. Someone has to come pick me up. Um, it's, it's not something that I would do uh, for something other than the range. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. It is not a bike you want to pedal once the battery is dead. Definitely. All right, so you, let's uh, let's hear what what did you get for range? Sixty miles. Sixty miles, which is right in range mm -hmm. with what their estimate is. So which 60 is pretty good because we got some big hills. Yeah, we got some big hills. It was um, that was it died on my way home from work one day, and on the way to work, I uh, gave my husband a heads up and said, "You you might need to save me on the way home because you could feel it was starting to slow down, but it really didn't slow down even on the hills till that last day, which yeah. I thought was pretty good." So I mostly stayed in pedal assist uh, one or two until the last day I had to bump it up, you know, to three or four. And it started just it give me this burst of power and then not much on those hills. And so I started getting kind of winded and then done. Also something to think about if you're looking to maximize range, especially with a fat tire bike, pump your tires up. Mm -hmm. I think we have these at about 20 and I think they can go all the way up to 30. So you could go higher. I kind of, I feel like 20 is kind of a happy medium if you're, you're riding on the road. Um, but yeah, 60 miles, which makes me think that the 80 miles is actually still possible. I agree 100%. Yeah, if you're 100%. going pedal assist one, mm -hmm. flat ground, mm -hmm. you know, not going off road or anything like that, I think you could probably squeeze uh, 80 miles out of it, which is super impressive for a bike that weighs 88 pounds, not, not counting any extra, you know, weight, obviously, that you're um, riding with. So I, it actually surprised me a little bit. All right, that completes this video. Again, if you're looking to purchase Hemiway, 
be sure to use that link in the description. It really helps us out and costs you nothing extra. And if you like this video or like these types of videos or just like Jamie joining us on videos, let us know in the comments section. Give us a like. That also helps uh, us out on the channel here. We are certainly open to doing uh, more range tests and bringing Jamie back to do uh, more videos with us and getting, getting a little bit different perspective um, as well, especially from someone who commutes. So thanks for doing it again. Yeah, thanks for having me uh, back. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one.